What up friends, Liron here, coming at you from Israel. What up friends, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. Um, I had a few very busy days and apologies for not updating, but I actually uh, came back to Israel on the 29th of uh, June and I'm back here. Um, I didn't really keep you update about, updated about that. Again, apologies about that. I also want to apologize for skipping a day. I literally did not plan to skip a day on the videos, but just the video <laughs> took so long to be exported and uploaded that I was just forced to postpone it to the day after. Because what I find is that when I don't do that and I just say, mm, okay, I'll just publish it um, later in the same day just it gets significantly less views and then it gets ran over by the next video because I do it daily so I did decide um, I made a deliberate choice um, as to as a response to what was happening I just decided to postpone it by a day so apologies about that um, anyway I finished a painting today that I just wanted to share with you I did this um, Japanese lamp here and I thought it would be a good one to just go over and analyze uh, some of it and especially how I approached painting it and my work order uh, because one of the things when just starting out with watercolor uh, the, the main issue that I had was really um, under like knowing what to do should I start with the background should I start with the things at the front should I uh, how should I approach just the painting itself? Should I do wet in wet? Should I do this, that? I just had no idea. Uh, and now I'm starting to feel like I'm getting uh, the hang of how to approach these kinds of things, okay? Um, and as I mentioned, I said that I will do a lot more paintings off camera. Um, and as a byproduct, it, it just means that there will be a lot of uh, videos of me showing paintings I've done and not necessarily just processes. Um, so this is a good way to start that because I feel like off camera I'm more focused uh, I learn more and my goal here is to improve and if I can just pump out a major improvement uh, in the next few months I can just give much better content in the future um, and in the future years to come hopefully as well. Uh, so anyway let's change the angle and take a look at this painting and see what we can learn from it. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, I'll use the trusty back of my silver black velvet brush to demonstrate. So, um, basically I want to first talk about my process and what I did, okay? I'm not showing you the process itself, uh, but I do want to talk about how I did it practically. So, the first thing I started with is looking at the center of attention. I drew this very very carefully while making sure everything's accurate, the proportions are accurate. Sorry if there's a bit of noise, let me close the window a bit, yeah. So, uh, just making a really accurate drawing. Uh, for the background I almost put nothing in terms of drawing. I just did a few lines here representing where there's gonna be some grass and some things like this, but I left it for the most part really empty. Okay, now um, if you look at the reference image, um, which hopefully I will put um, again somewhere so you can see it, this is very bright, but it also has the strongest contrast. So there is the darkest and the lightest. So to uh, make use of that, I decided to first work on the lamp itself and only then do the background while negative painting. Okay, so the first thing I did was actually to put in, you see this uh, very thin, weak wash of blue. Here there's a, um, a little more uh, stronger wash. Uh, all of this left wall and under the shadow here, under this, this shadow, that shadow. Uh, I used a very light initial wash just to put in the major shapes of the shadows. Um, I used for this entire painting burnt sienna, French ultramarine for the lamp and for the background I used uh, again the French ultramarine but together with chromium yellow and magenta. Okay, um, so anyway, I just put in that very light uh, wash and filled it up completely. This area, all the way down here, all this left side, all of this uh, right side, sorry, all of this right side, under that, everything. The next thing I did was to start putting in the stronger shadows. These include uh, these shadows that you see here that are slightly darker. These shadows here, the blue, some spots here. Um, the, all of this 
large shadow shape that's a bit darker you see this small triangle it's lighter than all of this side so I put in uh, those darker shadows I made this one significantly darker also this and that um, I actually did did this one afterwards together with the darker wash uh, I, I flipped it completely rotated it and then let it run from bottom to top it was from top to bottom when it's rotated and let the paint gradually move to a lighter paint um, and also this one then once I was done with that I went back for the third wash which has the darkest darks and this includes these dark spots here on the right side because uh, this thing turns around and less light can uh, can reach the bottom and especially this side because the light comes somewhere from here okay uh, which is why this side is darker so anyway this very dark part this very dark part and also the, these thin stripes of darkness uh, these parts that represent the texture of the crisscross uh, here so I just negative painted around those crisscrosses uh, to make them pop uh, I darkened this I added these uh, decorations to the sides of the lamp made them really dark um, this one had to be significantly darker the shadow under here and this one received a very strong treatment then I was done with the lamp okay now uh, so far so good it was relatively simple because I'm, I'm, I'm already competent with dealing with one object now here's where it started to get more tricky now I had all the background now the background is super valuable because imagine that with without it all of this would be white okay so you would see and I'll, I'll put a picture of the process here as well okay I'm gonna put it on the top right corner so I just hate to do that because that means I actually have to go through the video and find the place where I said it but anyway I'll do it uh, anyway I'll go over it really carefully so um, in any case uh, oh, I've lost uh, track anyway yeah the whites so if all of this paper is white and we have white here then there's not a lot of contrast there is contrast with the shadows and the shape of the of the lamp was pretty clear as you can see uh, but still so what I did was at this point and, and as the image itself suggested the background should be darker but how dark should it be well kind of between the darkest of this one and the white it shouldn't be of course as light as this um, now when you do something like that you have an opportunity to play around with how dark the background is to to complement the object so in places where it's very light I used some dark backgrounds and in places where it's uh, it's less light it's darker I use the medium darkness uh, background before I get to talk about how I did the background I just will say that it definitely looks a bit overworked especially these areas um, I just didn't know how to do them better honestly uh, it, it was a huge wash and it was very challenging okay but that's fine because still the center of attention isn't hurt entirely um, so it, it is cool uh, but let me talk about the option of approaching the background. So I had um, basically two main options. One is to do it wet and wet, meaning I should take a large fat brush, this one, and just wet everything around the lamp and then just do it wet and wet. Take the paint I want, put it in, inject it into the wet. Uh, this creates a very nice flowy feeling and it would prevent some of these streaks and marks. The only problem with that is that it's such a large area that I'm just not that good with wetting such a large area and still keeping control and it also tends to light up really bright uh, because there's a lot of water in it. So what I decided to do was and, and I did all of this painting while tilted but I tilted uh, this a little more and just went from top to bottom while changing the color and using the bead to make an even wash. Um, this was how, how I decided to approach it I um, mean you can see that at the top it was a little more even and here it got a little more streaky and overworked um, probably should have wa uh, used more water uh, a wetter wash to do that uh, just to make sure that there will be a more of a gradation and less marks um, on it but still I'm pleased with the result the alternative of wetting everything up it just tends to dry on me really fast and I'm not that pleased with the result um, so I decided not to do that uh, now as I talk I'll just remove uh, the tape just so you can see the clear frame here uh, the paper I used for this is the Legion paper the paints are actually Daniel Smith 
which you can see here in my palette. Uh, some of you recognize this palette. Um, it's the one I have here uh, home, back home in Israel. Uh, I didn't have it with me in Paris, and so you didn't see it at all in the last two months. Um, in any case, yeah, so uh, I am pleased with how I uh, approach the background. I just think the execution itself could have been uh, a little better. Uh, but what I will do is work really hard on wet and wet because it's something that uh, I still haven't really uh, figured out entirely. Uh, a lot of it actually has to do with climate. So uh, if your climate isn't suitable, you may find that the paint, uh, the, the water dries really fast. And that's a problem too. And I do know that some uh, in some areas it's a little easier to do wet and wet. But you know, no excuses. I'm going to try uh, and improve uh, my technique, my wet and wet technique uh, in any case. So yeah, just trying not to move things around too much, but here we go, let's get rid of that. And now you can see, you can better see the clearer uh, frame of the, of the painting. Uh, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this kind of a review. There's gonna be a lot more of these, I'm gonna warn you in advance, uh, because I am trying to work on my skills really hard at my own privacy and without recording the process, because uh, really you have to understand, the moment I turn the camera on, my brain is, like instead of being 95% immersed in the painting, it goes back into 80, 75 because of all the, all of the worries of how is this turning out? Will I be able to use it for a video? And no, I just don't, don't want to do that. I don't want to play that game. Uh, I prefer to, to really work on my skills for a while. I will make also demonstrations full-time narrated. Don't worry about that, but I'm gonna um, maybe keep them to once a year, uh, a year. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're gonna keep them to once a week, which is basically what I've done so far. Um, maybe a little more than that. I used to, I did so far a little more than that, so now I'm gonna change uh, and do them a little less frequently. But still, there's gonna be a lot of them, there's gonna be a lot of uh, tips, videos about different uh, color combinations, different mixes, different exercises. So uh, rest assured, uh, the how to spirit is staying. Okay, so anyway, this is it. I hope you enjoyed it, and let's wrap up this video. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope seeing how I approach this painting and the whole work process and starting from the object itself that's at the front and then going back and doing a very wet wash and just the way I approach it, I hope it teaches you something new. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I will put the link to, this, to, the, um, to the reference image so you can maybe uh, try out painting the same thing if you want to um, and then you can follow the order in which I worked at. Uh, and yeah, hopefully that helps. And I will see you again in another video tomorrow.